I think if you gave this to someone from the raid too, they'd probably be able to kill like 47 people with it, like on average. The Raid 2 is written and directed by Gareth Evans and stars, here we go again with the wrong pronunciations, Ika Uwais, Arifin Putra, Tio Pakusadewa, and Alex Abad. The Raid 2 takes place directly after the Raid Redemption and our main character from the last movie, Rama, has to go undercover and infiltrate these high-ranking politicians and gang leaders in this version of Jakarta. Because of the events of the first movie, these higher-ranking politicians and stuff know that someone's out there and took out like all their guys and whatnot. So he is, has to go into hiding to kind of protect his family and also just to find the biggest fish in this pond. Now it's always great to have foreign films like get theatrical releases here because that's very very rare and in terms of like the Filipino mass audience there's really not much that you know they will really flock to like, but it's just great to have more foreign movies here especially you know other movies from Southeast Asia and the Raid is a movie that you know how could I not be excited for it I mean this movie has four times the budget of the first one same director same cast of actors for some reason this is like one of the only sequels this year coming out that I really was not apprehensive about like I was so confident that these guys knew what they were doing and it turns out that the Raid 2 is this completely absolutely ambitious sequel that builds so much on the first one without you know really just repeating what the first one is about they really dare themselves to go beyond that formula and what happens is that you know we get something that's completely different but it continues the brutality and the violence of its predecessor so it's really a complete package the first thing you gotta talk about when you talk about the raid is definitely the action scenes uh, in my opinion i think the action in this movie is much less relentless however i do consider it to be weightier what i mean by this is that because they have more time to add story and context and stuff suddenly all these fights have much more weight to them there's more depth and you can obviously tell that gareth evans the director and this whole cast really just had much more fun also just trying to think of new ways to do things because you have lots of cool new weapons here you have two characters who are literally named baseball bat guy and hammer girl or something like that but you know they have cool weapons and they do lots of damage. And one thing that has not changed from the first movie is the fact that Gareth Evans uses his environments very well. We're no longer stuck in an apartment complex which I thought they used very very well. However, every single environment where a fight takes place in this movie is used like to the max. And speaking of environments in this movie, this movie looks gorgeous in terms of just the visual. The environments which are like, you know, office buildings and fancy uh, five-star hotels and neon lights and stuff, it's not necessarily original, but you know, I've said this before that originality doesn't really matter to me as long as it's executed well. And in the Raid 2, I think the environments they create here are very, very detailed, they're very, very intricate, and these places end up having character. Because the interesting thing about the Raid 2 is that while, you know, we've seen these kinds of uh, places before, we get the idea that they're kind of seedy while at the same time they kind of retain their shiny glory and whatnot. It's a very interesting kind of effect that happens. So it's seedy without feeling dirty, you know? It feels like uh, a city being run by people who are trying to cover up the dirt. And I really just have to mention the makeup work being done here because when you think about the makeup work in this movie, it must have been insane to do it because you have scenes where people beat each other to a pulp over like so many different cuts and just thinking about how many makeup artists had to come in and apply like tiny bits of makeup on the people like after every take it must have been incredible and the effect really is incredible and the cool thing about the raid 2 is that you can really feel that it's not this low budget movie anymore like this movie is shot as if it's an art house movie what i mean by this is that the colors and the lighting are extremely vivid they reminded me of something like drive and almost every single shot in this movie is just framed to perfection. I mean, not the scenes where, you know, people are fighting, but, like, every other scene is just framed so well, and, you know, they have a really good sense of place and know when to put, like, these huge wide shots with lots of things happening. Unlike the first movie, though, this movie does have a bit of shaky cam, although it doesn't really bother me at all. It didn't make me motion sick or anything, and you could tell that these actors were still doing their own stunts. And despite that, it is absolutely mind-blowing how this camera is able to follow all the action almost all the time, you know? It'll be falling around and just, like, swiveling all over the place. It really does boggle the mind, and what happens when you 
are able to capture this action so closely and so faithfully is that the violence ends up being sort of beautiful in a way. What I mean by beautiful is that, you know, it doesn't necessarily feel like it's a bunch of people just, you know, senselessly beating each other to death. There is a method to this. It's almost like dancing. The sound design also in this movie is very, very good. Just like the first movie, it's very crisp. It's very brutal. Every hit feels like just a hammer, again, hitting someone in the face, and that actually happens in the movie. You're really reminded of the chaos that happens around you with the amount of sounds they just kind of mix together. And while this movie doesn't have a score by Mike Shinoda anymore, they do use two Nine Inch Nails songs, so I was very happy about that. And in terms of acting, I am convinced that this crew, this cast of actors, are the best collection of like stuntmen actors ever. They're really, really good. They're not just, you know, random people who just fling themselves into the scene. They really do know how to act. Of course, I have to give a spotlight to Iko Uwais, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. He's the main character who plays Rama, and he, he displays just so much emotion without having to say a word. Again, what I love about Rama in this movie is that you can tell that he's vulnerable. You know, he does get hurt also. However, my favorite performance in this movie is by Arifin Putra, who plays uh, like this guy that Rama has to befriend. He's like the son of this crime lord and this this son He feels like his dad isn't, isn't living up to his legendary status You know and this this son wants to take over and you see that arc develop you see him kind of descending It's kind of like the Godfather, but Arifin Putra really takes his character beyond the stereotype that you really do believe him And you feel sorry for him sometimes and in the end you just feel like he's this sinister dude and at this point, it's pretty obvious that Gareth Evans, the director, has an extreme respect for action. He knows exactly where it belongs. He knows how it's supposed to be shot, how it's supposed to be shown to the audience. Uh, the action scenes here never really feel like they're just in there randomly. Like, it really feels like they picked their action scenes, and the action scenes really felt necessary. Evans is also very successful in making this film feel a bit darker than the first movie, but not so dark that, you know, you can still kind of connect the two. And he really proves that he doesn't, you know, just rely on a gimmick, sort of like the first grade where it could be argued that the whole apartment complex thing was a gimmick. But here he really expands his view, you know, he goes to all these different kinds of environments, uses different kinds of techniques. He's really, really a great director. Now in terms of writing, I was really surprised to see that the conversations in this movie, and there are a lot of them, are very very well written actually and they're very very layered there's so much stuff going on behind you know these words people are saying there's so many motives being thrown around and you know you don't know who's lying and or not and what's cool is that every single character fits you know not everyone obviously has a complete arc however everyone really does fit into this huge crime saga everyone is affected by the decisions these people make however while i do find the plot very engaging i don't think that it resolves quite as well as i would have hoped by the end and sometimes it does get convoluted, I have to admit. And in terms of the editing, of course the fight scenes are edited impeccably, like they never miss a beat. And there's tons of visual storytelling in this movie, just, you know, huge long sections of this movie are just wordless and they just kind of show you certain images and you can immediately connect the dots of what's happening. However, with the amount of visual storytelling this movie has, I found it kind of weird that there was so much talking like that. It's honestly one of my bigger problems in this movie is the fact that there was too much talking you know like there's i think there's a way to kind of cut down the conversations just tell it visually or tell it through a fight scene i don't know like there are lots of points during this movie where it just felt like you're waiting for the next action scene but anyway in the end the raid 2 is a really really good movie trust me like i'm not sure if they'll be showing anymore by the time i put this up but it's definitely worth a look I still like the Raid Redemption more, like it gave me way more of an adrenaline rush also. But you know, I love what this does as a sequel. It's so unafraid of going beyond, you know, the previously established borders. It just does everything so well also. And try and get a copy of the Raid Redemption and the Raid 2 one day and just, you know, bring a bunch of guys together, watch it back to back, have fun. Alright, so that is my review of The Raid 2. Have you guys seen it? What did you think about it? Whether you loved it or you hated it, whether you agree with me or not, please leave me a comment and let's have a conversation.